All right, guys, we've got an update regarding the realignment situation and the Arizona State AD has come out and he seems very upset about Arizona State's move to the Big 12 saying, I promise I'm not going to Morgantown. Ray Anderson wants no part of the future trips to West Virginia. So kind of an interesting situation. We've heard rumors surrounding Arizona State and Utah really not wanting to join the Big 12. Kind of surprising considering there's just no other options available. This does seem like a scenario where uh, these athletic directors and people within the teams are really angry at a Washington or an Oregon for ripping apart the Pac-12, although it really wasn't Washington and Oregon's fault. They did completely break the conference, but this goes all the way back to the start of realignment, at least the recent stuff with Texas, Oklahoma, and then UCLA and USC. And, you know, we'll see what, it's just a weird thing. And he says, I promise I'm not going to Morgantown. I'm going to sign that to Gene Boyd. He can go to Morgantown, but send me to Texas and the rivalry with Arizona and starting a new one with BYU and Utah and Colorado. Earlier in the press conference, Anderson complained about how he wasn't exactly excited about the idea of taking the soccer team to Syracuse in the middle of the fall season if they were going to go to the ACC. So this has been another thing that's simmering about people getting angry, other sports outside of football. We've seen some of the softball uh, players get mad and tweet stuff out about, this is not what I signed up for. They're going to be doing a ton more travel now. The issue is... It's almost like, and I'm going to get to it later in this video, the idea of football just being an entire separate entity because all of these decisions that Arizona State, Arizona, uh, you know, Oregon, Washington, they're all making these decisions based off of football and only football. But by the way, it makes sense to do that because football in a lot of these universities' cases is the only money source when it comes to athletics. Everything else is in the red. Now, I I think there's a few baseball programs in the SEC, maybe Vanderbilt and a few other ones that might generate a little bit of revenue. Basically, everyone on every sport, it's in the red, it's all expenses, and it's college football and the TV deals that's what pays for them. So I can understand both sides of it. Listen, if you're like a freshman or you're just going into your freshman year and now you've got to travel to Rutgers from Oregon, clearly that's not what you signed up for. That's the whole idea of maybe we should take football and make it to make it a separate entity. We've seen Notre Dame do something like that in the form of they're an independent in football but they're in the ACC and other sports. The Big Ten will most likely be moving to 10 conference games, according to a Michigan insider on their website. This isn't surprising. And yes, this is exactly what I talked about. It was inevitable. There are too many teams in these conferences. We have the 12-team playoffs, so you can make the games tougher. And the new schedule for college football will be 12 regular season games, 10 conference games, one cupcake non-conference game. Like if you're you're in the Big Ten, you'll face a Mac school, something like that. You're in the SEC, you'll face a Sunbelt team. And then one competitive non-conference matchup. It's the idea of Ohio State playing 10 conference games, also playing Ohio University, and then also playing Notre Dame. One tough non-conference home-and-home, one cream puff, and then 10 conference games. We're trimming the fat off of these schedules, we want pretty much every weekend to be competitive. And right now, I mean, we're just not getting that in the SEC. We saw what the SEC did. It's mind-boggling. It's despicable. But I believe that's more of a negotiation money problem than the SEC not wanting to go to nine games. I mean, them being eight games. And, like, look at what Georgia is doing this year. I mean, what are we doing, guys? They're not, and I know they'll say, oh, it's because of Oklahoma joining the conference. They made us cancel it. I get it. But like, what's the, is it really fun to be 35 point favorites in your four non-conference games? Really? You know, it's like, who? if you lose a game, who cares? It's life. Just, I, like, I want to see my team face good teams. I'm sorry I do. So I like the idea of going uh, to 10 conference games and then one tough non-conference game, preferably a home and home, because we do want to see Ohio State 
travel to Notre Dame. We do want to see Notre Dame come to Columbus. We want to see Ohio State go to Tuscaloosa. Those are really raw matchups that we usually never get. So you have that tough home and home, and then you have one cream puff. That should be the new structure when it comes to college football. And then you can see Arizona State fans not happy with their own AD. It's just a very strange statement to make. You just joined a conference and you're already bad mouthing one of the teams in it. It doesn't. It's not very logical. I under. You know, you don't want to go to a cold climate, I guess. But even that, it's just something weird to say. Uh, so their fans not too happy about that. Could the Mountain West and Pac-12 merge into a single 16-team conference? That is the idea that's going around right now with the Pac-4, I guess you would call them, remaining. Could they just go to the Mountain West? How would the TV stuff works out? Uh, this is what we're talking about, or put it in another way, what if you don't want all the Mountain West schools, maybe they want to trim a little fat off, Mountain West bylaws contain procedures for suspending members, but not outright eliminating them, although the rules can be changed with 9 of 12 votes from its presidents, the founding Mountain West members would not be in immediate jeopardy, sources indicate, but San Jose State, Nevada, and Hawaii might be. So are they referencing, they're referencing and saying that, wow, the Pac-4 might want to merge with the Mountain West, but trim the fat of Nevada, Hawaii, and San Jose State. Wow. And listen, Hawaii's trying to get a new stadium right now. San Jose State, Nevada, it certainly makes sense that those teams would probably be on the outside looking in. I mean, I, I believe Nevada was a team that was just horrible last year. Another issue is the TV contract. Fox and CBS share the current Mountain West deal that has three years remaining and includes causes for renegotiation if the conference adds or loses anyone. If it passes on new inventory, the conference can seek a third TV partner. The Pac-12 deal expires next summer. The logical solution might be operating under the Mountain West contract through 2026, adjusting forward for the new additions, and then they'd negotiate a new deal that wouldn't command Big 12 money but could double the $5 million or so that Mountain West schools get now. So an interesting wrinkle going on right here. They need 9 out of 12 votes from the presidents in the Mountain West to possibly kick out San Jose State, Nevada, Hawaii and replace them with Washington State, Oregon State, and California. Wow. And then Stanford becomes an independent and they try and get into the Big Ten. That's the idea behind it. The Pac-4 meeting with Mountain West tomorrow for merger discussions and then immediately meeting with Apple and a few American schools to discuss expansion. Again, all options are on the table, but their preference is to expand and continue. I assume that Washington State and Oregon State prefer Big 12 invites. Absolutely. Here's a question to ponder. What happens if those two lock themselves into the new PAC grant of rights and then the Big 12 offer comes? Yeah, that could be an issue. I'm more interested to see what happens with Stanford because I, I still think they're waiting for an offer from the Big 10 and they're just going to go independent. Also, there's the idea the Pac-12 is still, or I guess at this point, the Pac-4 is still considered a Power 5 conference, which is funny, and they would have a, you know some type of benefits in that form. And then we do have a few more updates here on the Big 10, potentially targeting Miami. It just makes sense, according to one source telling 247 Sports, pointing out the expanded conference lack of footprint in Florida. That's also the idea of FSU coming to the Big Ten, but I don't think that's going to happen. Miami to the Big Ten, it, it doesn't seem like a culture fit to me, but Miami is a team that, you know, to the SEC, I could see for sure, uh, but that is an interesting rumor there. We also have this talking about North Carolina and Virginia would be two schools that the SEC would pursue should it leap back into expansion. So right now I would say the SEC shortlist, uh, number one, I would say Clemson is number one. You could argue it, but I'd say Clemson is number one. FSU is number two. And then number three for the SEC, maybe Miami or North Carolina. I feel like Virginia fits the Big Ten a lot better. But again, I'm someone that said I thought Stanford was going to the Big Ten. It feels with the academics like it would happen. Virginia would be great in terms of basketball for the Big Ten. You're not adding much of anything for football. I mean, their football team would just get... 
that's a very tough conference you're joining the Big Ten. Although at this point, it's such a large conference, you know, maybe you get an easy schedule. But Virginia, you know, they would be a school I feel like would fit the Big Ten. North Carolina, I feel, fits the Big Ten slightly more than the SEC. The SEC certainly could poach four teams if the ACC does dissolve or something happens to where maybe it's a similar situation like the Pac-12. Obviously, it's a much different spot in terms of TV deals. FSU made waves earlier this week and their university president said, uh, I would have to say that my current assessment of the situation after very deep analysis is that I believe that FSU will have to at some point consider very seriously leaving the ACC unless there is some change to the revenue distribution that seems like a threat there from the university president of FSU. And we'll have to see, you know, FSU definitely the most vocal team. Clemson, they've kind of been behind the scenes, but the sources say that they're also looking to potentially get out of that horrible deal as well. No surprise. We will see what happens there. But kind of the big thing, Arizona State's AD comes out. He's not happy. We heard the stuff about Stanford. Seems like Stanford denied the Big 12 and then went to them later. It just doesn't seem like Stanford. If I was Stanford, I would not join the Big 12. And the reason is obvious. I I don't know the exact context to the Big 10 situation, but joining the Big 12 right now and pigeonholing yourself into that conference for the foreseeable future... It just doesn't make sense, and it's not a fit, and I think Arizona State is looking at this. Really, Arizona State, uh, they kind of seem like a fit for the Big 12. You know, I don't know why they're so angry about it. Utah, I can kind of see. Utah does like to stand on a high horse. They're a little bit pissed off. They think they're better than the Big 12. But it seems like they wised up and they realized we just have to get a spot at the table Even if we think we're better than this conference, we still have to make sure, you know, we can get somewhere and and not be completely irrelevant. You're seeing what's happening to Washington State and Oregon State right now. It is the nightmare dreaded scenario. What are those fan bases thinking? Are they going to be in the Mountain West? Are they going to try and do a merger with with the American? Either way, their teams are going to be more and more irrelevant. Maybe they'll also have easier schedules. You know, that can be a positive for sure, but you do also want to watch your team. And if it's streaming only, that creates a big problem in and of itself. So guys, that is the current update when it comes to realignment. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's on.